Hi everyone, I'm Gail Anderson and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, we usually take several times a week where I get on and we talk about things that matter to moms, raising your kids, um, all the different things that influence that, the different issues and everything else. So I'm just here today wanting to connect with all of you and, and let you guys connect with each other. Yesterday we talked a little bit about simple lunches for kids. As you're getting close to the summertime, you may not be used to fixing their lunch all the time. So, And even if you are, it's something different. It's not a sack lunch that has to be taken every day. So listen to that scope if you're interested in hearing some ideas for summer lunches for kids. Today we're going to talk about navigating your role as a parent with your adult kids. Some of you may not be to that stage yet, but I'm telling you, start listening, taking notes, because you will be there quicker than you realize. Thank you for those hearts. If you like what we're talking about and what we're saying, then tap the screen, give me some hearts. Um, so anyway, I probably can't talk about everything, but I have several notes that I wanna hit today, and we'll see how far we get. You know, for the first 18 years, of a kid's life, most of the time you're making a lot of their decisions. You may have been their teacher of certain things, you're their guide, you're their disciplinarian, you're their coach, but you know what? It changes when they turn 18. Now they should be taking more of that responsibility themselves and you should be more of an advisor. So the first thing to remember is that as you're going through the teenage years, begin to let out that leash. That is the term that my husband uses, and I love that, because it just suggests you need to start giving them more freedom than you had been. If you don't, if you control and keep them under your thumb all the way till they're 18, then in many cases you will find that your kids will completely rebel and go the opposite way because they have not had the freedom. So this is not an overnight change. This is something where you have to guide them as they're going along. And as you start to give them freedom, it gives you a chance to give them input as they experience some of those decisions in the later teen years. And hopefully they're listening to your input. They should begin to manage their own lives, to manage their own finances. And hopefully you've given them a foundation to where they're able to do that. Now, once they're out on their own, or even more tricky, still living at home but over the age of 18, I think the most important thing is respect their right to be individuals. We are probably tempted to still control their every decision. And the mistakes that we made, we want to make sure they don't make. So we just say, okay, don't do this, don't do this. But you know what? We cannot make those decisions for them they need to grow up, they need to learn to manage their own decisions and to suffer the consequences that go along with them. One of the things that's very tricky is not judging them in the decisions they make. And I'm talking about the little things, not the big things. The way they choose to wear their hair, the clothes they you know, choose to wear or choose to buy. You know, those are things that are really immaterial. The most important things are when we look at a kid's heart what are their goals? What is their heart? Who are they? And those are things that we want to be able to be supportive of even if they start changing and making some decisions that we don't necessarily agree with. So there will be things you don't agree with and that's okay as long as they are little things, things that are not that significant. I found in those years when my kids were making some decisions that weren't huge, I mean they weren't illegal, they weren't doing anything to harm people, that when I would get frustrated, instead of talking to my kids, I just talked it over with my spouse. Or if you're a single parent, talk it over with your best friend. That was my way to kind of get balance, to get somebody else's input. Um, to show me that, hey, I'm getting hypersensitive about something that really is not a life or death issue here. So getting input from somebody else is very helpful. Um, you can pray for them and just believe that God is going to change them. He can get through to them in places and areas that we can't. 
Now, if kids are still living in your home, adult kids, you still have control on the major things. I mean, if they're out there doing something that's illegal, doing something that's destructive, you pull the line on that. Okay, if you do wanna still stay in this house, then we are not going to do this and this and this. Um, you, should, you still should be able to control their hours somewhat. You know, they should have some kind of a curfew. In our home, when our eldest went off to college and he came back that summer, wow, he was a little bit different than he had been. And he liked to stay out later and do things like that. So we actually came up with a contract and said, okay, we are happy to have you home, this is awesome, but we still have younger kids in this home and we would like for you to respect our home and our kids by not using certain language that we're not used to or by um, you know, not leaving things all around the house because the other kids living in the house are expected to pick up after themselves. We expected them to have some chores, some things that they would be responsible for, their room and maybe mowing the lawn on the weekend. If they wanted to use the car, we needed to have all of that clearly stated. How do they ask for the car? How much notice do we need? Do they need to cover for gas, et cetera, et cetera. I remember one of the big things for me was just knowing if he was gonna be home for dinner. Because if say my husband and my eldest son were not home for dinner, I would probably fix something a little bit easier. But if everybody was going to be home, then I wanted to make sure I had a certain level of meal that I was going to serve. Um, it's just one of those things where you have to respect their, their right to be an individual and to make decisions for themselves. And yet, if there are things that are going to influence the general family at home, then it needs to be specified. And I think I mentioned we use contracts for this. This worked wonderfully in the later teen years. We had driving contracts. Um, we just had contracts for things that were big deals that we needed to delineate some of the different expectations and some of the different privileges that they would receive. But just remember that if they are still in your house, mom and dad, you can draw the line. Yes, they're individuals, but if they're wearing their pants in a certain way and you don't like it, I don't think that's reason enough to say, okay, you can't live in our home because of this. So you've really got to choose your battles. Look at the things that are really big, that really influence their direction, their path in life, what their heart is. But if their heart is good and they're just making little decisions that are different than you would, it's important to respect that. Now, a lot of times we have to do the changing first. We have to make sure that we listen to them, listen to who they are, and uh, realize that our advice is not always wanted. You know, our tendency all while they're growing up is to teach and help them and you know discipline them but that's not what we're doing with them as they get older so they've got to be responsible for themselves and if we're just giving unsolicited advice it will often fall on deaf ears now if they ask for your advice that's wonderful don't be too strong don't be too judgmental but do let them know hey yeah, you've asked me how I would do this. Yeah, this is usually what we did. I understand, you know, you might not see the benefits. Here's why we thought it's good. But just make sure that you're relating to them as I consider it more as a friend than as a parent to a child. This is so important. And we have hopes and dreams for our kids, but you know what? They are individual people. God has made them with a special mix of personality traits and strengths and weaknesses, and we've got to respect those and allow God to do in them what he wants to. Now, even if we give them our advice when they've asked, this may not necessarily be followed. Again, you want them to be individuals. You wouldn't expect a friend to always obey or follow everything you say. So make sure you're doing it and not expecting every little thing to be followed. Often, we will take advice from other people outside that are telling us the same thing that our parents may have told us. But it comes different from somebody else. It may not be as threatening from somebody else. And so it's one of those deals where 
we've just got to be glad that they're doing it. And even if they all of a sudden listen to our advice and a month later are doing it and think it's their own idea, that's great. At least they're doing things that we can appreciate and we respect. Another thing that I think is so very important is to give your children grace thinking. That means give them the benefit of the doubt. Think of them as doing what's right, being a good person, following the law, and don't expect the worst of them. Sometimes it's easy to look at a teenager and to look at the outside and think, oh my gosh, they're going down the tubes, but they're not. And we've got to be able to look at them and know their heart and see what they're really like and believe that they're going the, the right direction because that's gonna influence how we actually respond to them. And again, responding to them sometimes is not always a slow process. Sometimes we react. And I know that was one of my issues with my adult kids, to react and say something too quickly without actually stopping, thinking, considering how I was gonna say it, and responding appropriately. Actually, I'm still working on that. <laughs> something we all probably have to think about. So, that's it for today. Um, I appreciate your feedback. If you wanna get a hold of me, Go to my profile in Periscope and you will find many things, my email address um, to contact me. You'll find my YouTube link where you are able to see past scopes. And then you'll also find a link to the blog where my husband and I blog, which is three times a week and that's at kirbyanderson.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for letting me impact you today and hope you're having a wonderful Friday.